Hello, my beautiful people. How on a day? I believe you guys are having an awesome time. And I believe you are keeping up well. I want to especially welcome you once again to our awesome program where we discuss issues. As it affects us as individuals and as a community and as a people. So please take with me a few minutes. It's not too much. Because you are going to be interested in what we are about to talk about today. So please stick with me. All right, as we trash yet again another important topic that I believe will change your life. All right, so today we want to talk about something I've entitled Fighting the Wrong Enemy or Fighting the Wrong Enemies. You know, Fighting the Wrong Enemies. Now, as a human being, having enemies is normal. It is normal for humans to have enemies. In fact, there is no person on earth without an enemy. But you see, identifying the right enemies is the first step to the solution of the problem. Because fighting the wrong enemies do not bring solution, but rather compound the already existing problems. I don't know if you're getting what I'm talking about. So we want to really look at something very important to us as Africans. It's of great importance to us as Africans and as individual. Now, to solve a problem, we must first identify what the problem is. To tackle your enemies, you must first of all know who the real enemies are. Because when you are unable to identify the real enemies, everybody becomes a suspect. All right. Now, I have realized something as an African, okay? African born, African bred, full fleshed African. And I love this continent so well, and I love the people of this continent very well. But you see, sometimes identifying as an African is hard. Very hard. Why is it hard? Because Africans, or let me say to a greater extent, some Africans, they hate the truth to the core. Now, humans in general, they hate the truth. But when it comes to this continent, Africa, it is extreme. We as a people extremely hate the truth. And if you check throughout our history, we are fond of fighting those who come out with the truth. We are fond of fighting those who stand for the truth. You know why? We love our fantasies, our lies. You know, it's only in Africa that when you want to tell the truth, you are advised to, you know, romance the truth a little bit, make it make it sound appealing. You, you, you shouldn't go blunt on the truth. But the truth of the matter is the truth is the truth and the truth must be said no matter the consequences. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we have gradually as a people cultivated the culture of fighting the truth. We don't want to hear anything truthful. So why am I saying this? You see, I told you in my previous video that Africans lack a sense of identity. Do you understand? A great proportion of Africans lack a sense of identity. We don't really know who we are. Do you understand? And you see the funny thing about not knowing who you are. When you are unable to identify yourself, everybody can identify you whatsoever way they want do you understand you see people will address you what you address yourself people will call you what you call yourself but if you don't have a name or if you don't have an identity then anybody can impose any identity on you and you have no choice why because you have not what proposed your identity you have not made it known to the world that this is who i am i must be addressed like this then it becomes wrong for somebody to address you outside what you address yourself i don't know if i'm making sense africans lack a sense of identity and as we go through you understand what i'm talking about most africans do not understand who they are they don't they are they are not what familiar with their history they don't know their lineage they don't identify with their roots and the worst of all is that they are not concerned africans are permitted to be anybody else and it's okay while everybody is authentic being themselves 
Africans prefer to be somebody else. And this narrative has sold out for so long and nobody is saying anything about it. It is cool. Do you understand? Are you getting what I'm saying? I told you before, when you go to the United States, you see a Chinese man. You know this is a Chinese. He identifies as a Chinese. Do you understand? When you go to America, you see an Indian man. You know this is an Indian man. He identifies as an Indian man. Even his accent is Indian. When you go to America, you see an Italian. You are, he identifies as an Italian. Even those who were born in America, they still have a sense of identity of their roots and their origin. It is only one people, Africans, that when you go to a foreign land, you don't even know where they are from because they tend to drop their roots and begin to what uh, uh and begin to what's it called identify as something they are not you cannot be everybody you can only be you do you understand now when you try to copy somebody you are denying them the privilege of knowing who you are i don't know if i'm making sense we lack a sense of identity we are trying so much to be somebody else. And this on its own is wrong. Let's go forward. You understand what I'm talking about. Now, the hardest race on earth to deal with are the African people. I made a post. I told you that. In Africa, we have the extremes of everything. The most spiritual people are from Africa. There was even a time when Europeans sent... Um, some men to Africa to learn spirituality. They wanted to understand how a people can be this spiritual. Can I also shock you? The most religious people are still Africans. And when I mean religious, ignorantly religious. You get it now. The most intelligent people can be found in Africa. Now, a report came out that um, the student making top having top scores in, in university in America are from Africa, from uh, West Africa, Nigeria, the Igbo tribe. They are excellent in education. They are excellent. So everything I'm saying, you can go and um, try to confirm what I'm trying to tell you. The most intelligent people in the world are found in Africa. And sad enough, the dumbest people on earth are also found in Africa. The tallest are found in Africa, Sudan. The shortest are also found in Africa. So Africa has, has, has uh, the extremes of everything you want in, in this continent. Do you understand? We have everything. What are you looking for? You can find it here. But the, the problem is the people, the youth especially, they don't know the potential of Africa. They don't know what Africa have. And that is why they keep trying to run away to look for what they have here, thinking they can find it somewhere else. The hardest race of people to deal with are the Africans. Very hard. Very disunited. They are not united at all. Do you understand? They don't see each other as one always fighting amongst themselves and this is what the enemy wants now as time goes on you understand who the enemy is but there's something i want africans to understand you can never be stronger than your roots you can only be strong as your roots can i say that again you can never be stronger than your roots your place of origin you can only be as strong as your roots so if you want to be respected all over the world if you want to be treated with dignity if you want the world to see you for who you are you must build your roots you must build your base can i give you an example chinese people are respected everywhere in the world you know why they have a base in china every chinese man identifies that he comes from China. And they know that if you mess with the Chinese, you are messing with their base. They have a base. Hello? There is a base. There is an origin. There is a root. And at the end of the day, they identify with their roots. You can never see an Indian claiming that he's not Indian. They understand their roots. They know where they are coming from. Even the ones that are born in foreign countries... Let's use America, for example. When you ask them of their great-grandfathers, they know. 
They know their origin. They know their roots. They know where they are coming from. Hello. But you will see a Ghana boy born in America. He doesn't even know his grandfather's name. He has never visited his home country, Ghana, before. He knows nothing. All he knows is that his parents are Ghanaians, but he was born in America, so he identifies as an American. He cannot speak any indigenous Ghana, name, um, Ghana language. Excuse me. I'm just using Ghana for an example. Do you understand? You can never be stronger than your roots. You can only be as strong as your roots. I wanted this one to sink in your head today. The reason why the world does not respect Africans is because we keep denying our roots. It's because our roots are weak. We are not the powerful people. You know why? The base, there's a problem with the base. And instead of us to sit down and look for solution on solving the problems in our base, we keep running away. Keep trying to identify, even you go to China, some, some Africans, dark-skinned Africans, they claim to be Chinese. Instead of claiming to be South Africans, they will say that I'm Chinese, I'm not a South African. You go to Russia, an African guy is claiming to be a Russian. You go to Ireland, Caucasian, that, that island that the people there are, are like as white as snow. You see an African, he will tell you that he's, he's, he's from Ireland, he doesn't, he doesn't have a connection with Africa. And this is a very big problem. And that is why we are making our time to pass this message. Africans need to unite. Africans need to understand that our base is in Africa. And until we build our base to be strong, we are, we are, we are going to be a laughing stock out there. Nobody is going to respect us. Nobody is going to respect us. Do you understand? You can only, I don't know how much I'm going to emphasize this, you can only be as strong as your root. You see, a man who doesn't know where he's coming from <laughs> cannot predict where he's going. He's on, a, on, an, on an endless journey. You know why? He doesn't know where he's coming from. So it is often of great importance that we take this matter seriously. I don't know why in this continent we never discuss serious issues. We are all concerned about unnecessary things. You know, we love entertainment. We love to chop life. We love to live large. But we leave the basic things that make us up as a people. The basic things that make us who we are. Many of us have neglected our roots. And that is why these criminal politicians keep doing what they can do because nobody is holding them accountable for their actions. We are so distracted. You know, somebody said when you, when you give a slave, some slaves, you give them key and bread, they will take the, key, the bread instead of the key. You know why? Taking the key is hard work. Because after taking the key, they have to escape. That is hard work. But the bread can satisfy their hunger. So we are so hungry, chasing peanuts, chasing money, chasing all that. And that is what the system wants you to do, to keep chasing and leaving the important issue that needs to be addressed. Keep trying to be to be to be something that we are not. You know that's why I said we lack information as a people. We don't know the foundation of our history, and that is why we are trying so much to be somebody else. And as a result, we have we have come to a stage of self hate and proposing false propaganda. Do you understand? I know Africans that hate themselves. They don't want to identify as Africans because they have no knowledge of who we are. You know what they do? They try to copy uh, the Westerners, but they don't understand that we and these people are not the same. Go and read history. Go and read history. I recommend this book for you, Origin of Civilization in Africa. Go and read that book. It will really help you. We are not the same. Now, let me tell you, from history, Europeans are xenophobic in nature. Xenophobic. What does that mean? They have fear for foreign people, foreign cultures, and foreign beliefs. 
and up to today they still uphold that that is why i want to go to europe they'll be asking you for visa and all those all those nonsense you understand these guys have fear for foreign people have you gone to a typical european home or an american home they are hostile to strangers especially strangers they don't know from anywhere but that is not the case here in this continent the motherland and i will explain further so they have fear for foreign people for foreign cultures and foreign beliefs that is a xenophobia xenophobic attack and that is why when i see african countries for instance like south africa trying to copy these guys and becoming xenophobic in nature it is it is it is it is it is heartbreaking because that is not our nature as african people europeans practice individualism what does that mean that means they uphold individual and personal rights and freedom in societies and they are very pessimistic i think this is self-explanatory that is their nature Do you understand? The so-called whites. Of course, nobody is white and nobody is black. You know, it's, it's, it's stupidity in the highest order for Africans to be identifying as black. You are, you are simply stupid. Pardon my words. So these guys name themselves white. Purity. Everything white is good. And they named you black and you accepted it. And today, moron like you, you're calling yourself a black man. I'm a black man. You 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 need you need <sighs> my goodness. They named themselves white and they called you black and you accepted it. Today you identify yourself as a black man. They call you uh what's it called? Um uh, Negro, you rejected it, which is the Latin word for black. They called you nigger, you rejected it. But they now give you the English name of nigger, which is black. And you accepted it. And you say, I'm a black man. Even I heard some stupidity. Some African, no. Some Americans in Africa said they are not, they should not call them African Americans. Because they don't, they don't believe they are from Africa. They should call them black Americans. Go and research and check the meaning of black. You see why, you see why wisdom is, is very important. The... Is it your grandfather that gave you that name black or is it your ancestors? It was those same people that enslaved your grandfathers that called you black and you accepted it. Today you are calling yourself black. You are not black. You are an African. You only have a dark skin. Check the meaning of black. Go and, go and research and, and, and know the meaning of black. And that is how they could name a country, Niger, which is what? Black. Nigger. And they accepted it. They named a country Nigeria, which means nigger area, black area. And to today, it has not dawned on the leadership of Nigeria to change that name. Like Kwame Nkrumah changed the name of uh, Gold Coast to Ghana. They have not thought about it. They are still answering Nigeria. Named by, by Flora Shaw, the girlfriend of Lord Lugard. You see, you see how sometimes I don't understand how the brains of some Africans work. It is terrible. Do you understand? Now, when these guys came, they took away the right leaders in Africa and installed the most foolish Africans to be leaders. Because in every people, there are foolish people. There are dishonest people. There are criminals. They took, they removed the right leaders and installed these criminals on vital position. And they have maintained that till today. And now they are breeding foolishness in this continent. Black man. What a disgrace. You're a black man. And he calls himself white. Anyways, that's just by the way. So for the essence of this video, I'm going to call them uh, the Westerners, okay? Because those guys are not white and I'm not black. So they are individualistic in nature. It means they have what we call a nonchalant attitude. Everybody minds his business. That is how they are. That is their nature. You can't take it away from them. These guys cannot do something for you without wanting something in return. And that is why I see them Africans now, they are shouting uh, that Russia is the new, uh, what's it called, ally of Africans. I just realized that your, 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 your mental strength needs examining. Do you understand? They are all the same. The fact that you change your slave master from um, English one to Russian is the same thing. What is wrong with you guys? You see people now excited. Russia likes Africa. Russia is fighting for Africa. <laughs> <sighs> Why? 
Why can't we do things on our own without external influences? Can't we? Are we not? Are we not smart enough? Are we not intelligent enough? Are we not capable of handling our own, our own, our own affairs without external uh, affairs, external uh, what is it called influence? For how long have we had a relationship with these people? What has been the result? That is what a right-thinking person should think. What has been the result from having a relationship with these people? Obviously, they are the ones benefiting and Africans are dying and suffering on a daily basis. And nobody is saying anything about it. Even the Africans are not saying anything. Africans are now trying to copy the individualistic nature of the Westerners. Everybody's minding his business. Okay, since it doesn't affect me, uh, it's not my business. You, you to happen one day that it will be your turn, then you understand what people, what the vulnerable poor Africans have been going through because this puts pain in my heart. What the vulnerable poor Africans have been going through, how they have been victims of so many circumstances beyond their control because those who are in the, who are in the right position to speak out are not doing what they ought to do by speaking out for the voiceless, by telling the truth at all costs, and by standing for the right thing to be done. If you keep calling yourself a black man, then you have a serious problem. You are not a black man. You are an African. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you today? We are not individualistic in nature as Africans. In contrast, Africans are xenophilious in nature. What does that mean? We have love, attraction, and appreciation for foreign people, manner, and cultures. In our African tradition, you treat strangers well. We say that when you see a stranger you don't know, give him seat, for he or she might even be a messenger from God or an angel. So you welcome visitors well. When a person you don't know visits you as a real cultured African man, you don't stand at the door and ask who are you. You give him a seat to sit and then you talk. That is how we were brought up as African. That is our culture. We are not xenophobic in nature we are xenophilious we accept foreign people foreign cultures and we appreciate it how do you think these guys came and penetrated africa because we had a culture of accepting everybody as one as the oldest people on earth we have that liberty of accepting everybody as one as loving everybody but this guy had these guys had a hidden agenda do you understand our culture permits us to appreciate people You get it now? You go to the an ancient African herbalist. Do you understand? He is not able to cure your sickness. He will refer you to another one. We don't kill ourselves over people's beliefs. We don't kill ourselves over people's culture. We accept everybody with their uniqueness. That is how Africans are. And Africans must understand this is who we are. Go and search your history and understand who you are. Africans are very accommodating people. We accommodate our neighbors. We accommodate foreigners. We treat people as ourselves. We are the re-practitioners of love. We are very peaceful and we practice collectivism, unlike the Westerners. Collectivism, what does that mean? Where family and community efforts are of greater priority over individual goals. And that is why in the olden days, families own lands. Do you understand what I'm saying? We do things as a family. That is, there is a proverb in our, in our culture that says that a child is not raised by the father and mother alone, but a child is raised by the community because we practice collectivism. One person's child is everybody's child. In the olden days in Africa, when, you're, when you are not at home, the whole neighborhood is watching your child. They discipline your child, they correct your child, and they make sure your child is in, is, in, is, in, is, is, is in line. So also you do to other people's children. That is how we are. That is, that is our identity as a people. Do you understand? Collectivism. We believe in community efforts. We believe in helping each other. We are not too money conscious as a people. We believe in help. We believe in relationship as Africans. Do you understand? We practice harmony and cooperation in society. It is highly encouraged. And we are very optimistic people. Are you getting me now? So you must understand this thing. So when next you see an European or a Westerner being a racist to you, you should understand that you are not the problem. Hmm? 
neither are you the victim they are just being they are the problem and they are the victims of their own fears these are who they are and who are you do you understand we are the oldest people on earth so you should understand what is going on here but it's quite unfortunate that you see as blessed as we are as a people we want to disassociate ourselves from our origin and our roots and we are trying so hard to copy another people people who have their own problems we want to copy them we want to be like them now everything africa does not sell you must have something european and this was the tool they used in colonizing africans you know by bringing their stuff made in Europe, their fancy stuff, and some of the foolish leaders that were in Africa at the time, they were they were in love with the European things, in love, you know. Uh, so you give me give me a nice mirror, I'm going to give you some slaves. They were in love with Africa with um, European stuff, and that's how it started. So if you want some of our stuffs, bring, and that is still practiced it today. Our presidents, our senators, they want cars made in Europe. They want, uh, what is it called? They buy houses over there. They want to build a house. They import all the materials from abroad and they brag about it. Meanwhile, somebody who's into manufacturing over there, he's struggling because nobody's patronizing his goods. And you say this is a normal way a people should behave. And nobody wants to talk about it, okay? Don't talk about it. Just, let's just live our life. Mind your business. Mind what business? We have been minding our business and see where we are today. So why can't we for once stand up to the truth, defend the truth, fight for the truth? Because at the end of the day, it is only the truth that will make us free. My people, understand who you are. So that nobody will push you around. Do you understand? Everybody is proud of their roots. Everybody identify with their origin, apart from Africans. You know why? Nobody wants to be part of the losing team. Because of the struggles of Africa, everybody is shining. It's better now. It, it used to be worse before. You don't identify as an African. When Africans go to abroad, they identify as uh, uh, Americans in Africa. That's what they identify as. They go everywhere. They just want to remove themselves from their roots. You know why? So that they can be able to escape the stigma against Africans. But today is getting better. But there is enough work that needs to be done. Do you understand? We need to build the foundation. We need to build our roots. We need to stand strong on what we believe in and who we are as a people. Go everywhere. Everybody idolize their ancestors. They appreciate them. They celebrate them. They remember them. Over here, we don't. And this, of course, to a greater extent, to the greatest extent, was as a result of Christianity in Africa. Christianity really pushed the propaganda that our ancestors were slaves. Were, sorry, our ancestors were evil. And it boggles my mind. Listen, some people's ancestors, the Westerners ancestors, came here, kidnapped, killed, raped, destroyed, sold our ancestors as commodity all manner of inhumane treatment against them destroyed their livelihood sold them out took them over there and enslaved them they are not evil no european talks evil against his ancestor they are they are saint matthew saint john saint paul saint peter they are saints after all the atrocity that was that was committed they are saints but the African ancestors that went through this wickedness, the greatest inhumanity to humanity, are the evil ones. How do you connect that? The victims are now the evil ones. You know why? They had the power, so they saw the wrong narrative. And the worst part of it is that African youth, African children have bought this narrative. The church saw the wrong narrative that... Our ancestors were evil. They were worshipping idols. They were that, they were that. And today, nobody wants to identify with his ancestor. But when you want to pray, you, you, are, you call on uh, Israelite ancestor, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. But you cannot call God of Ikwade. You cannot call God of Kwame. People in Africa are worshipping God of Israel. What about God of Nigeria? What about God of Cameroon? If you want to go to the Holy Land, you must travel the way to Israel, to the Holy Land. So God wanted to come to the world, okay, to save the whole world. He chose a race, a people. And before I can identify with my God, I have to be like those people. Christianity deprives you of your Africanness. You must be an European. 
to be a Christian. You must wear your fancy tie and your coat. You can't dress in your African attire. You can't play your African drums. You can't sing your African songs. It must be all European before God who created me an African can accept me. No, no, no. I don't want that kind of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we now worship God of Israel. What about God of Gabon? God of Guinea? Why must my God identify with a certain people? So these guys reference their ancestors where they want to pray. But Africans cannot. Our ancestors were evil. The people that were victims of the, the, the highest cruelty against humanity are the victims. Why the perpetrators of this wickedness are the saints? And we've accepted this narrative. Do you understand? The church came and changed our names. After baptism, Catholic church, they say they give you a Christian name. From Odumodu to Peter. From Chinedu to Caleb. Because our names were not befitting of a child of God. He needed to change it. So you see the narrative and the agenda. I'll go into that topic. I don't want to talk about it right now. Most of you don't know Jack. There was an agenda. Removed these people from their remove them from their roots because a people without an origin is a weak people. They associate them so that you can be able to destroy them. And that is the narrative today. Africans don't want to bear African names, they want foreign names. They want to answer Peter and Mary and John and, and whatsoever. But anything African is evil. Even our names must be changed. It's time. Chinese answer their name everywhere. Japanese answer their name everywhere. But Africans, it is not cool to be African and answer an African name. You must change it to an English name, to an European name, to an, to, you know, before you can identify. There's a problem. So we hate our ancestors. We accuse them of being evil. People that without them, they are your roots. Without them, you will not be here today. You say they are evil. They are wicked. They are that. You see people holding prayers against their ancestors and against anything in their family, causing causing havoc in families, causing uh, what's it called disunity in families. Pastor will come out and tell you that your problem is your mother in the village. And as stupid as you are, you believe such a thing. A woman that gave birth to you and carrying her womb for nine months is the one causing your problem. So if she wanted to kill you, why didn't she kill you when you were a child? She gave birth to you only to torment you. And you believe such stupidity. Do you understand? They tell your village people after you. We don't think. Village people after you, what qualification do you have? Okay, take the village people aside. Bring your qualification. Bring your skills. Because every person great person or person of uh, influence is a skillful person bring your skills bring your expertise bring your talent bring your qualification and see if it is witches or your family that's after you or it's simply ignorance some of you don't have skills that's why you are struggling you can't sell anything i said you become poor when you have nothing to sell everybody who is great today has something to sell is it your time is it your knowledge? Is it your skills? You name it. And so on and so forth. So I've come to clear it out today. Your ancestors are not the cause of your problem. The cause of your problem, I will, I'm going to explain to you. Part of it is ignorance. Secondly, that you are fighting the wrong enemies. Your ancestor is the source of your life. Without them, you will not be here today. Stop accusing your and and have a connection with your origin. Have a connection with your ancestors is of great importance. So as we round up, who are the real enemies of Africa and Africans? Why is it that somebody will graduate from school and 20 years no job? What is the problem? Why are Africans poor? Why are they suffering? Number one, your number one enemy in Africa, I say with all confidence, is your government. Because what you are praying for in Africa, it is being done free by government over there. Free education, free medical care, good roads, electricity. But over here, you have to pray that when you are going on the way, a trailer will not kill you. Meanwhile, in Europe, trailers come out at night. They don't come out at daytime. 
so that they can preserve lives. Their roads are motorable. They have nice roads. They check their cars if it's able to work on the road. Over here, you can do whatever you like. And when people die out of the stupidity and the ignorance of the government, you blame your forefathers and your ancestors for killing people. Now, some stupid narrative they take is that in during the ember month, September, October, November, this are festive season where people tra travel to and fro the towns to the villages and all that, you know, to meet friends and families. So the possibility of accidents are higher at those times because there are there are there are there are more people using the roads. Do you understand? And the roads are in bad condition. The vehicles are in bad condition. There is no speed limit. They don't check uh, drink driving. Do you understand? No speed limits. No checking of drivers who are drunk and driving. No, uh, what is it called? Good road. No good vehicles. And when accidents happen, instead of you to understand that is as a result of the negligence of the government, you will call witches and wizards and ancestors and all those, all those nonsense. You must understand. If the government do what they ought to do in developed countries like they do, you will have less problems. Do you get it now? Number two, enemy is your mind your mind is your number two enemy your inability to think big to be creative to be innovative your inability to be to be to be able to create something new to generate great ideas is one of the reasons why you are struggling and that is your number two enemy number three is your attitude some of you you are sacked from your work not because of your witch, because of your bad attitude. You go to work late. Why won't you be sacked? You are not efficient in your workplace. Why won't you be sacked? People are looking for people who are efficient, who can bring results. Not um, the, your your employer is not doing you a favor. He has employed. He's paying you for a reason. So if you don't do your job, you will be sacked. And when you are sacked, you go back to church. They tell you a witch. You believe such things. You go to another job, you are sacked. So women cannot stay in marriages not because of family witches, because of bad character. How many times are we going to say this? Some people cannot be in a relationship because of bad character. Some people cannot do business because of lack of integrity. It's not witch or wizard. It's, you don't have integrity. You're not a good businessman. It's as simple as that. Why is it that witches are always attacking African Christians? But the unbelievers are succeeding. They are billionaires. But African Christian witch, because your mind is too small, it's too shallow. Your attitude is bad. The nonchalant, the nonchalant attitude is too much. Do you understand? Now, end with this story. The story of some boys in Nigeria that they employed, called happy boys. They employed to, uh, to become securities in, in a restaurant. And... They were doing TikTok on duty, rest, security. They were doing TikTok on duty, dancing on their duty post. And when the manager saw it and sacked them, people were saying, the manager is wicked. What kind of wicked word is this? Are you, are you normal? If it was your company, would you allow somebody of employed to secure your company, start dancing? They were, they were complaining that they were sacked. And somebody who said he's a man of God went to build them scholarship abroad. And today he has been embarrassed. You want to give scholarship to somebody who is not disciplined. What was, what was this? Uh, why, why did you give him the scholarship? Are you encouraging people to go to their workplaces and dance? These are what we are talking about. We need to change our attitude. We need to change our mind. We need to hold government accountable when they fail to carry out their responsibility as leaders. Do you understand what I'm saying? We need to build our base, Africa. We need to reconnect to our ancestors and build our roots so that we can be well-respected all over the world. Because if our root Africa is powerful, we are powerful people and we shall be respected. People respect Germans because their root is powerful. Germany is powerful. Do you understand? People respect Indians because their root is powerful. People respect Chinese because their root is powerful. People respect people not because respect is aimed. Nobody respects a poor man. Nobody respects a beggar. Our people are everywhere, everywhere in the world, in the worst of conditions, begging, you know, doing menial jobs. Some go as far as going through a desert, risking their life to cross. Some die just to go to a foreign land. And you think they are going to respect you. People sleep in the embassies to get visa to run away from Africa. Until we build our base, nobody will respect us. Nobody will give us our, our, our what is it called? The respect that is due to us. 
And that is why this message is coming. It is time for us to rise as a people and start thinking properly and start doing things properly. And I tell you, the change that we want shall surely come. Until next time, it is a bye for now. And I look forward to seeing you again. Love you so much. Bye-bye. Take care.